back at you at Gloves Off, and today we have a great individual, Mr. Anastasio Barrera. How are we doing today? Fine, thank you. And uh, Mr. Anasta Mr. Barrera is going to be running for District 6. Three. For district for district three. Three, 3. In, the, in the, the city of Laredo. And uh, we'll touch a little bit about why and okay. who is this great man, and we'll take it from there. Mr. Barrera, talk a little bit about why Laredo... De donde eres y todo eso. Well, I was born and raised here in Laredo. Okay. I lived all my life here. And uh, my father used to have the Barrera Stop and Shop uh, grocery stores. And uh, I used to work there. And then I went to the Army about 1967 on September. And I was one year in Vietnam, 68 to 69. And uh, I was with the first cab. That was an air mobile. We were infantry, it was infantry. And uh, I was in a very big, big battle on November 16, 1968. I was with the same company, if you ever saw the movie with Mel Gibson, I was with the same company. The battle was on the same days. The air assault was on the same day, but three years later. Okay. And uh, on the morning of November 16, 1968, we had a surprise ground attack one hour before sunrise. Okay. And some power woke me up and made me prepare for battle as I had never prepared for battle in, in the nine months I'd been in Vietnam. And uh, when the, I, I, I had just pre finished preparing for myself when the ground attack began. And it started with about three or four whistles. And, and the, the, all the perimeter, the, the, as the enemy hit the tree flares, it lit like, like daylight. <laughs> and the first thing I, 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 I saw all the enemy, I said, God is with me. I turned around and saw before me were about 20, 25 enemy soldiers attacking my, my foxhole. And I said, God is with me. No, I said, they're going to kill us. I have to kill. And there were three in front, those are the ones that hit the tree flare. I shot the one on, on the right, and as he fell, everybody, all the enemy were like mad talking to each other. And then I, 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 I said to myself, I took too long to shoot. If I continue shooting this way, they'll be over me. There's too many. So I stood up, and I had learned, because from a little kid, I used to go hunting a lot. I had to learn to shoot from the hip. Okay. I could hit a rabbit from the hip. So I stood up and shot the, the middle guy. Then I turned around, and the other guy was already pointing his rifle at me. And I said, I have to shoot fast. I, 
I'm going to see if I, see if I can hit him before he, he hits me. So I, and I hit him before. And then a guy was going to kick the tree flare. And behind the tree flare, uh, we had the Claymore mine. And I blew the Claymore mine. And I saw that guy and two other guys blown up. And then a lot of dust went up. And I couldn't see nothing. I just saw the sticks falling, which were other enemies. When the dirt had settled, there were about seven guys still left. And they were all shooting at me, and I was shooting at them. And I wiped, I, I wiped them out. Then I did a lot of other things, you know. Well, so, thank God that he was with you, and thank, thank you for your service. Okay. And I want to say this. We have a lot of veterans out there, and yeah. veterans are our cornerstone okay. of, our, of our country. Right. And if it wasn't for us, our great country would not be here. Right. And uh, we want to thank you and thank all those that are serving our country. Mm -hmm. and keeping the red, white, and blue blowing. Okay. And um, that is a great story that, yeah. to me, touched well, me. Well, I continue fighting because I don't want to take too much time. No, but no, go ahead. Talk. Another Mexican-American also was shooting, and I, I support, after I wiped out my group, I supported him and another American, but the other American wasn't hitting nobody, but he would shoot two to three times, and then and then he would fall. Uh, after a while, he stopped firing, and I said, why did he stop firing? I knew he was killed. And, uh, well, because of what he did, I was able to then go outside, go, uh, go outside my perimeter and get the enemy on a crossfire. Sure. But because he wiped out <clears throat> about more than half the enemy, and his, they were attacking his position. If he had not done that, I would never have been able to do what I did later, you know? get the enemy in a deadly crossfire. <laughs> and this prevented the enemy from overrunning a perimeter. And uh, I, I wear this because this uh, Medal of Honor, they, they made the monument to fire. Sure. I, was, I was with Chuy, Chuy Hernandez, and I was telling them <laughs> that I had done something that I deserved the Medal of Honor. And another Mexican-American, but they never, they never helped me. And, and no veteran, the veterans don't want to help me. They say, no, no, no. They, one time they even voted uh, because I wanted to find a group that uh, tells, uh, the finds, find, finds evidence, you know, from the officers that write down. And they voted not to help me, <laughs> the American Legion. And, and you know, I, I enter them because of their constitution. It's very beautiful, you know. They said sure. the veterans are supposed to support one another. And they, acting like Mexican, not like Americans, and saying, we're not going to help this American, this Mexican. And, and they voted not to help me. I wasn't there telling them to help me get the medal. No. I just help me find some company that looks for those, those uh, information. They voted not to help me. So, and, yeah. and I'm a witness of the other Mexican-American that's supposed to have a Medal of Honor. <laughs> and they, they had this this monument here, and they don't do nothing for me, other Mexican-Americans. They had a Medal of Honor with, for Medal of Honor recipients for uh, Mexican-Americans, and they don't, they don't do nothing. And, and, and you should go to uh, uh, Ray Benavides, Ray, 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 Ray Benavides, I believe, the veteran that got the Medal of Honor. Sure. He's from a, a county outside of Houston. And sure. one time I passed through there, and as you enter the county, they have a, like a 20 by 20 billboard. Sure. Explaining. You, have to, be, you have to be proud of, of, of the ones that defended, especially our community. Right. And I am very distraught that our community and the communities here in the United States in general have forgotten mm -hmm. those yeah. that defended and kept our freedom. And they put them aside, and that should not be. Yeah. And that is something that, um, let's see what we, I can do, let's see what we can do. Yeah, like Ruben Avides, he lives in a county mostly of Anglos. Yeah, that's what I'm and telling you. And this Mexican-American, I live in a county 90% Mexican-Americans. Yeah. I, I, I understand. Okay. Well, I understand. I understand. Uh, I understand the frustration. I understand. Right. right. Now, then, uh, what, what, what else can we say? Let's uh, let's say. Um, what other topic? We know your bravery. We know you're 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 just in in what you've done. Okay. 
why would you want to run for city council? What made you spark to run Rita well, at this time and age? <clears throat> when you join the army, you take an oath mm -hmm. to protect the United States Constitution from foreign enemies or from within. Sure. And I have protected from foreign enemies. Now we have to protect it from within because they have destroyed the United States Constitution and our Bill of Rights. I'm, I'm with you with that. Okay. And they're trying very hard to do that. They've already done it. They've done it in a many, many things. They're, they're trying to really they damage have, it. They have done it. Uh, what made me run is that, you know, I have a, a church. And we, we, have, we had a monastery about 10 miles on about six miles on Highway 359. And this, this was a, a real working ranch. You could see sheep and goats and chickens and everything from the, we were on the highway. And, and it was a, re, I had over 50 goats and 50 sheep and the goats that were already, they were registered and we were registered like a milk breed. I was going to use them for milking. And then comes the, the government and confiscates everything by due process of law. We learned three days before the sheriff sale that they were going to sell it. Because a lady came out, uh, was outside our yard, uh, uh, ranch, and my wife went and asked her, do you need something? Can I help you? No, I, I came here to see because they're going to sell this ranch and sheriff sale three days from now. I went to the FBI and told them, I, I know my rights. I was a notary public for many years. And I know my constitution and uh, rights, and I know I've defended myself sometimes against crooked lawyers, and I've won against them because God has helped me. And uh, three days we learned. I went to the FBI, and they refused to help. They refused to stop. This is a crime in progress. They were com they're violating. It's the Title 18, Section 242 and 243 of the United States Criminal Code. That's uh, public officials on the color of law violate the rights of a citizen. And that, that commits, that's a felony. And they refuse to stop this crime in progress. Although the FBI has, FBI has jurisdiction on all civil rights matters, and this is a civil rights matter because they violated our, our due process of law. It's like, like we say, how would you like a, some, you see somebody looking at your house and you ask them, can I help you? Well, I come to see it because in three days they're gonna sell it. And you go, you go to the sheriff, say, no, you cannot stop it because a sheriff sale cannot be stopped within seven days. If you pass the seven, it's less than seven days, you cannot stop the church sale. How you like? Without notice, without due process of law, the right to go to court? And that's, that's the reason I began. And I, I, I started, uh, I, I'm starting a new political party called Christian Constitutional Militia Political Party. This stands Christian stands for God-fearing individuals. You can be any religion. You can be a Buddhist or anything, but it stands for God-fearing individuals that know that there exists a God. <clears throat> because today, most of our government officials call themselves seculars. That's a code word for meaning that they're atheists. They don't believe in God. That's why all these laws are being passed, because our government officials are now atheists. And our founding fathers of the Constitution were God-fearing individuals. Yes. Okay. So, and uh, that's the reason I, I, I'm running, I'm building this political party. I'm asking for veterans and anybody that wants to have the rule of law, the United States Constitution and our Bill of Rights to get together and become activists in this political party. And uh, when I run as in this political party, anybody that becomes a, a candidate in our political party, we will have town hall meetings. Okay. What does town hall meetings mean? 
is that I will not vote as I wish, but the, we will have a meeting and you, the people will tell me how to vote. The only time that I will not vote, as you say, the people say, is when that issue violates the Constitution of the United States. From the beginning, I will say uh, this, I will vote no, because it violates the Constitution of the United States or the Bill of Rights of the people. Because I, when any officer, uh, city council or anybody, goes into office, he takes an oath to protect the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights. So that's what our, this political party will stand for. And also, we will teach the citizens how what the United States Constitution stands for and what the Bill of Rights are. Right. And most people don't know that the Bill of Rights was established to prevent a mafia of power. Sure. Our founding fathers were like Andres Lopez Obrador of Mexico. They were tired of the mafia of power. Tired of... Uh, so a few, uh, of the bossism or, that existed. Eh? Of the bossism that existed. Right. Throughout the history, there's sure. always been a mafia of power. And the United States is the only country, when, when, as the founding fathers established it, as a free nation, a free man. Do you know that in the United States, every citizen has the right of power attorney? Sure. What does power attorney mean? Well, a power attorney means that any citizen can write any contract, he can write his will, and at that moment, it's not a legal document. But you take it to a notary public, and for $7, it becomes a legal document. In Mexico, in England, in all the other countries that have the code law, you have to pay at least $300, because sure. it's a monopoly. It's a monopoly. Only they can make legal contracts. They have to write it. They're going to charge you for all that. A simple contract will cost you at least $300. In the United States, any simple contract or a will will cost you $7 or 14 depending how many people have to sign that be notarized. Right. So the United States is a real free nation. It is. It is. And we have to protect that. Right. And there... There are certain powers. I, I believe that everybody has a right for opinion, right. for their freedom, for their expression, for all that. Right. But there has been, we live in Laredo, and there mm -hmm. has been, the majority are Democrats. Okay? Mm -hmm. There has been a change in that political spectrum that is no longer the Democrats of Kennedy. It's no longer that. It's Oof. some kind of socialist, communist regime that's inside there that is causing those so much havoc that are segregating those Americans that are trying to express themselves legally. Okay. And that is happening now. And okay. we see it, we see it in, in, in the West with, with uh, the way they actively and aggressively um, go after veterans, just, just like yourself, because they're waving a flag. <laughs> uh, you know, stuff like that, that, that that's going on there, going on in Austin. And that needs to stop. That is yeah. not our America. And if the, for those Americans that love our country, we need to stand up. Yes. So I'm glad that you're doing this. Yes, because, you know, the United States is not a democratic nation. It's a republican sure. form of government. It's a, it's a lot of difference. In a democratic form of government, the majority have rights. The sure. minority have no rights. In a republican form of government, everybody has, everybody has rights. Nobody loses his right. Sure, it is a republic. It's a republic. It's supposed to be a republican form of government, and, that, and that, that's that's and everywhere you see, they say democratic. This is a democratic nation. It's a lie. It's a in every in the constitution, it's, it's supposed to be a republic. And yeah. And so, as they what they've been doing, like I will respect the rule of law. Sure. I will stand up for the rule of law. And that rule of law also states the Constitution and Bill of Rights of all the citizens that, that are under me. But also, <coughs> I stand against the sewer charges of Laredo. The, the sewage charges? Sewer, the, how yeah. the sewer is charged. 
they're charging more sewer than water in the bill. And what's wrong with this is that they're violating our Bill of Rights of equal protection under the law. Because the ones that use more, more sewer, they're the big business like HEB, Walmart, and they, they don't pay no sewer almost because they use very little water. I, I can be watering my plants and I forget to close it. I'll be paying $100, $200 a sewer. And I don't, it's only me and my wife. We don't okay, do. Okay. So sewer should be charged by the occupants. How many occupants are, not by, by the water. That, that's, 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 that's like uh, you're being a, pointing a gun. You, the, you want water? You pay me a sewer. That's wrong. Water should be charged separate and sewer separate. Okay. Yes, that's, I'm that's, one of, that. that's one of the changes that you uh, will I try want. to change, yes. Also, I want to, the other change is lower taxes. Okay. Lower and taxes. I think everybody wants <laughs> somehow to lower the taxes. But how's your, how, how's your, how, 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 how do you bring out your ideas? Well, lower taxes and lower government salaries, governmental okay. salaries. Government, um, and also, their salary should be paid by the taxation, not by government businesses, like the rich. All that money should be used to lower taxes or to do something for the city. That money should not be used to increase the wages of, of government officials, to have more government officials that are not needed. I, I believe a school can have about four or five superintendents or six, and they're all getting $150,000. Right. That's wrong. It should be based on, a, like, uh, whatever minimum wage is, 20% the lowest government officials should make 20% more than the minimum wage of our citizens. Then it can only go four times or five times more. And that's it, no more. Okay. From that minimum wage. So let's say it would be ten dollars for the government officials beginning, and then the most they could pay would be fifty dollars an hour. Okay. Depending how how much, but it should be on that, and all the money made in all the businesses should be done for lowering taxes and not for higher wages, all the money collected from uh, traffic violations should be used also for lowering taxes or for doing things for the government. Okay. Uh, yeah. But not for wages, higher wages. Okay. So yeah. in other words, some of these way they get their income, it should be done for the benefit of the city and not just for the officials or for, for, right. for payroll. Right, not what's, what's happening, they're increasing the payroll. That's why. They want more taxes and more taxes and more taxes. And every, they're hiring, they're, the bridge, uh, uh, for you, they're charging the bridge, they go higher and higher and higher. In Mexico, it's a lot cheaper. And they, they have more personnel working there than they have in the United States. And they don't charge that much for a person to come to you know, to cross the bridge. In Laredo, they want more money, more money, more money, more money. It's because it's, it's just because of higher wages. Sure, I, I don't believe. It. Okay. Okay. Um, what else would you like to change in their city that you say, I? Barrera uh, will be able to change this what, well, besides that? Well, I will stand up for the Bill of Rights and the Constitution of the citizen. And, and of course, in, uh, in this political party that we're establishing is to teach the citizens what are your rights. Sure. All this, all this information can be found in the Internet. Of course. We can only we'll just tell them, look at this Internet. And they can find out what the common law is. You know, the common law jurisdiction is what the United States is supposed to have. 
not cold law, not equal to jurisdiction, common law. Sure. <laughs> so, and that's what I, I, I want to stand for, want to work for, the common law jurisdiction. Sure. And also for the sheriff to do his job because he's the highest, biggest criminal because he's allowing the courts to commit fraud. And, uh, and the other one is the district attorney. Another big criminal, because the biggest criminal, because he's letting victims file a complaint, and they uh, the district attorney says, "No, I don't think I can win the case," and he drops the case. He has no right to drop the case. Maybe on equity, yes, but under the common law, he has no right. But what is happening when you go to the police department or the FBI or sheriff? They give you, you f sign your complaint, but they never give you a notice. Because a common law jurisdiction has to be on the road sure. to be common law jurisdiction. And they refuse to give you a notice. The FBI refused to give I want to file a complaint on the road, and they refuse. So over here, and they have, have, I'm not able to file a criminal complaint. Against all those that committed this crime against our church. In our persons. So Trump has begun religious persecution. Trump has begun the religious persecution in destroying our form of, re of religion. In our form of religion, to serve God is to take care of the earth. And, and if you can see that the first commandment God gave to man is to take care of the earth. Okay. You know? So now. But we have to realize that, that in government, we cannot mix church and state. So we right. have to separate that. And that's the beauty of this country. Right, but they have done it. Because the church, the state has taken church property, confiscated church property, without due process of law. Okay. But now let's talk a little bit okay. more on what the city of, the Laredo, of Laredo actually needs here and okay. in what we need in the council. What do you see how you can come in into the council and change. Get what's wrong right now, what's going on? What do you think? There's a reason why you're running. Well, what's wrong is that there's a baby of eight city council, eight or nine? Eight with a mayor, nine, yeah. Nine, okay. So here comes uh, corporate America, wants to pass a law. Okay. Wants a law passed in their favor where they're gonna make a hundred million dollars. Okay. Profit. Mm -hmm. So come here, they go to five, City <coughs> officials, councilmen, and they give you each one fifty thousand dollars on the on the ground to vote for them. With five hundred thousand, they can make a hundred million dollars because they bought five councils, and that's what's happening when they don't have town hall meetings. But town hall meetings, the councilman is just a representative. Whatever his people are telling him to vote, that's how he's gonna vote. Sure. And corporate America cannot go and, 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 and make the people vote his way. It's very hard. Sure. Compared to buying five people. Like in the United States now, they, they call the court laws. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. The Constitution clearly states there's only the laws are made by Congress. Sure. It's very hard to pass a law. There's, let's say, 439. It's about 435, but let's say 439. So you have to have 220 votes in favor to pass the law. Sure. Then there's 100 Senate. You have to have 51 senators to pass the law. Then the president has to approve it. If he vetoes it, you need two thirds to override his veto. So it's very hard to pass a law. Sure. And now they go to the Supreme Court, which has about nine members, with five, man, five Supreme Court judges, they pass a law, which it does not represent the country. Sure, sure. I, I, so, things have gone, things have gone astray, and we have to get back to the way it's supposed yeah, to be. It's done. supposed to be. Yeah. Um, your dis, your now. Let's go back to your district. Your district is from where to where? Well, it's from uh, from the uh, over here in the uh, from Guadalupe, about seven blocks. This way, but we go all the way to uh, Laredo Junior College, College. Okay. on Zapata Highway, west. 
All right. Everything west, west west of the highway. Or west of the highway. To the river. All right, to the river. Every, all that's District 3. There's a lot of what, things that what, have to be done there also. Like like what? Well, I, I say, you know, they're using a lot of money. for. It. I say take care of the creeks, make better people where people can go. Uh, having, people can go out that, you know, spend time not w w using too much money. You see? Uh, beautifying the, all this creek area. It's very easy, but uh, they don't do it. They, 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 I mean, they make a, 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 a sidewalk and they, say they spend $100,000. No, they, they could be trimming the trees, you know, taking care, making the but, trees but there uh, as a shade tree, so people, you know. You know, I'm going to tell you one thing. In, um, I've, I've seen several uh, city councilmen pass mm -hmm. by, especially in this district, and Councilman Perez has done a good job in reviving and beautifying this district. Okay. He's done a good job. Hopefully somebody needs to go in there and fill his shoes and continue moving forward, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of council that have councils that have come and go and yes, yeah, some of them place roads, some of them do this, some of them fix some of the the sewage and the pipe in the water and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. but really really beautiful beautifying. He's really the one that's really done it. Oh, okay. And um, and um, you know he's done a good job in that sense. Give credit to where credit is due. Just We just need people to continue moving forward. There's a lot right. to be done, you know. No, no, so that's a, and so, you yeah, know. Yeah. For a very long time, Laredo was neglected. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we start seeing this, these spurts of growth. Like, I, I went to, uh, on the other side of San Antonio, there's a little river, very, not very wide, but they build dams. Those people build dams and they make lakes. Sure. And then we have places for people to fish and just boating and everything. And it's a very narrow river. Sure. But because of the dams, they, they create. In Laredo, we had the Rio Grande, and we don't have nothing. In San Antonio, you can see what they have, how they made the canals. and what, what in, why, why in Laredo, they don't do that? It was called the Partido Viejo, oh, okay. and uh, back at that time frame, Zachary, the one that did that in in San Antonio, okay. wanted to do that here in Laredo, oh, okay. and because of politics, they yeah. pushed him out, so he went to San Antonio and did it over there, oh. and Laredo needs to get out of that mind frame. Like you said, the little bosses that are running around, the little mafias that are running around, that yeah. does exist, yeah. okay, and uh, unfortunately it does. And we have to vote vote certain people in and vote, vote certain people out, and it just it's hard to do because it takes a lot of people. The um, what else would you present towards the city? I mean, you were telling me, not changing a little bit. You were telling me that you were uh, Patricia Barreras. Yeah, but brother, uh, brother. Yes. Yeah. So you're going to have the same type of uh, yeah, some type feel of, uh, feel towards management the way right, she did because she did a excellent job. Right, right. No, she no, yeah. Yes, because when we worked for my father, he always told us to do fast work, you know, to work, work good, you know. And uh, that's why that's uh, the type of management my sister had. And that's the type of management I would do as a, an elected official. I would serve the people, trying to do. Okay. Of course, that's whatever true. the people would be telling me was wrong, then I would be getting a better idea, right? And then we would try to solve those problems. That's what, the way I would manage the government. Of course, the most important is protect the real, uh, constitutional rights of our citizens. That's the most important. Because today, and teach them what's the rights. That the police do not allow you to, to sign your co criminal complaint on the rolls. They're violating, they're acting under color law, they're committing a felony. That's what the federal law says. But there exists no more constitutional uh, common law jurisdiction. There is no more common law courts. 
So the United States has been destroyed from within, and we need veterans and other people that want the Constitution to unite and start in a peaceful manner, you know, in a peaceful manner, like Lopez Obrador, in a peaceful manner. But of course, there might be others out there that want to take the law into their hands, and they do. They might do it, but then they should. Those criminals should be beware that a common law jury trial. I don't think any common law jury trial will convict any person defending the United States Constitution. So they 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 should be they should be beware of what they're doing. And they sure. should stop these criminal acts. We're doing it, we're trying to do it in a peaceful manner, but others might not. You know? Like that man in, in Houston that started shooting police. He, he got tired of other black people getting killed by the police. He took the law into his own hands. But that's wrong. That's why we have vigilante laws and stuff, and we no, have to do it in it a different format. It might be format. wrong, but when there exists no law, what has happened in Mexico? Because there exists no law, people are being hung. They hang the people. They find a criminal and they hang them because they know the police will let, just let them go. Because right now, the police have a, a, a rule. They tell all the criminals, don't bother the nobility classes and their servants, right? which is the middle class. Go bother the working classes, and we won't do nothing to you. We won't send you to jail. We'll let you go. Over 30 years ago, a friend of mine that was a criminal told me that, that they would get him, they take him a few blocks, and they let him go. That's how it works. And, 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 and so there is no law to, for the common people, somebody. So you might say the law, but if it, there is no law. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely correct. Um, the, the election's November 6th. Yes. How are you coming along with that? Are you doing good or are you... Well, you're lost? starting. I'm, I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm going to be in Facebook. A lady's going to put me on Facebook also. So uh, sure. that's what um, in a few days uh, we'll we'll have our our banner for you know sure like uh, posters sure yeah. but mostly internet is the where I, where we say it's all that we stand for you know? sure okay and of course I'll be t giving small speeches and I will of course try to encourage people that want to protect the United States Constitution and our Bill of Rights. And the one, uh, tr the rule of law to exist in, in, in Laredo, and the common law jury trial, ju common law jury jurisdiction exists, and the common law jury courts exist. Because when you have a common law court jurisdiction, you have rights. Under equity, you have no rights. So when you go to the police department and you say a complaint, after you go, they get it and throw it in the trash because you have no rights. Never will a detective speak to you. You can go to the detective 10, 20 times. Oh, he's busy. He's not here. Come later. But they'll never talk to you. They threw those papers away. Because you're under equity. You have no rights. But of course, the nobility class and their servants, they have rights. And all criminals know they have rights. So it's not logical for a criminal to rob the poor man instead of the rich man. But they're afraid. The police work with the criminals. So they don't have to have work and, and they don't have to be afraid to have a, a shoot out with any criminal because they tell the criminal, don't worry, we'll let you go. Sure. We'll, we'll arrest you. So we, so um, what I'm gathering is that you're, you want to change a little bit of what the police does. How are you going to change that? How would you talk to the chief? How are you going to talk no, to them? No, well, we have to do, well, in, in, in whatever comes say, let's say to you, your vote. Let's say when you get elected, yes. how are you going to tackle that problem of the police? Well, try to pass a state ordinance against that type of action. Ordinance uh, stating, and maybe even call for referendums to establish 
common law jurisdiction. So the police officer gave all the complaints given on the road. Not, they don't give you, they don't uh, give you a notice. You don't say that on the road. Sure. Let me yeah. let me just tell these guys out here. Okay. Hey, Rudy, how are we doing, Bruni? Gabriel, Don, if you guys have any questions, type them in and we'll a we'll answer them, and we'll take it from there. And because uh, he's got some good points, <laughs> and I know that uh, Rudy, you can help us out on this. Continue. Okay. And th that's how m maybe a change could be done by forcing the police department to enforce uh, uh, all, all criminal complaints to be on the road. Yeah. That way, este, when it goes to a, a district attorney, he has to take that case. He cannot drop the case because it's on the road and he, his job is to take those criminals to court. Again, the, the, whoever is under that complaint, take them to court. That's his job. He cannot, he cannot say, I, I, I cannot win this case. I'm going to drop it. He cannot drop any case. And there have been cases like there was a little girl. Well, she was a woman already, mm -hmm. and she had sex with a teacher, and she wanted to drop the case. She didn't want to file charges, and the DA said, I'm going to file charges. And they gave him 10 years in jail which is cruel and unusual punishment. They violated his rights. Because it was a consensual sex. It was not forced, it was consensual. She was a woman. In our laws and customs, any girl at the age of 15 becomes a woman. And as a republic, she has rights. She has the right to choose her sex partner. Well, let me tell you one thing, talking about that. Uh, there's certain democratic leaders out there that want to bring a consent towards pedophilia as What's well. That? Pedophilia what when they can, they can rape underage kids, I know, and they want to pass that as law. No, so that's no, that, that's, that's, that's illegal. That's, because but they want to pass it. As law. Understand? That's the problem that we have. But mm -hmm. here's another one. Gabriel Lopez asks this: Do you support the the new purpose for the new landfill? The new landfill? Yes. No, that's why they say our bill of rights. Because that that uh, that uh, radiation or that is from another county. They're supposed to put Count it in their own county, not in ours. No, that th they come from another country. Well, maybe apparently. another country. <laughs> no, that violates so the bill of rights. So you're against it. So yes, hundred percent. Violates the bill of rights of, of the, this area, the county. And if we had common law jurisdiction, it would be taken to a common law court, and then the jury. Common law jury would decide yes or no. Mm -hmm. And whatever they decide, it cannot be appealed. Right. That's the difference. Because these uh, TV courts, you can appeal it a hundred times. In a common law jury trial, it cannot be appealed. So that, but of course we have to fight for the common law jurisdiction. Yeah. Yes. Anything else that you'd like to tell our, our, your constituents out there for, to any words that you would say, elect for, elect me? <coughs> well, elect me and help me protect the United States Constitution and our Bill of Rights and the rule of law. I need that help because as a city council, I will do everything to defend and protect the United States Constitution and our Bill of Rights, and the rule of law. And put all these criminals behind jail. These criminals are acting under color of law. They are acting under color of law, and they're, all those people who are losing their property on sheriff sales, have, their, their rights have been but, violated. But the sheriff is a county. Well, okay, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's say that. the taxes. Okay. They, they, come, they come and tell you they're going to raise your tax and, and you do not approve it. And then they send you to a kangaroo court in the tax office. Yeah. They're going to vote for it. The Arkansas Bill of Rights says anything over $20, you have a right to trial by a common law jury trial. Mm -hmm. So if 
If their tax is over twenty dollars, you can you have a right to a common law jury trial, and for them to decide if the tax increase is correct or not. These kangaroo courts, and that's what happens to when a policeman kills a, a citizen. The kangaroo court, of the police department say no, he 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 he, he his life was in danger. Like in San Antonio. A girl, 18-year-old girl, of course, made the police follow her. Four, four policemen, four police cars. She got off, got on, on, on top of a federal home stairs and with a stick, told the police, don't come at me, I'll kill you. Okay. So the policemen opened fire, four, 40 bullets at her, killing her and killing a, a young boy in the trailer. And they decided they had probable cause. How can that be? Do you think a common law jury would acquit those police? Of course not. You know, we we, didn't, we don't have to go that far. We had one here several oh, yes. years ago yes, over there yes. at that truck stop that was right, asleep and right. they shot him. Yeah. And what, that was funny there. You know, one said 90-something shots and yeah. the other one said 80-something. Then the coroner yeah. said 62 hit. And so it was all over the place what that was going on there. I don't even know whatever happened to that. They just, boop. El muerto no habla, como dicen. Right, right. And they just found out that they had probable cause, that their life was in danger. <laughs> but those are lies. Here's another question from Mr. Lopez. Okay. How will you work with a municipal court judge? Municipal court judge. How would you work with him? Right now, the judge is Rosie Cuellar, mm -hmm. Judge Rosie Cuellar, Honorable jo Josie Cuellar. And, uh, how, and uh, how would you work with her? How would a councilman work with him? I, I, I don't understand. How? But your judge is separate, councilman is separate. There are different departments. He's a judicial department. I'm an executive department. Yeah, but and you... we cannot work. Well, only, we can only do is is a check and balances, check that the courts or do, do not go outside the realm of work. Do not permit. Uh, do not permit fraud and things like that, or uncruel, cruel and unusual punishment, excessive fines. That's what a council, as an executive department, we can do. I think um, the city employees, mm -hmm. they're, they work in the, in the municipal court judge, so I think the budget and stuff like that will be on your jurisdiction. Oh, yes? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it depends. Depends on what, what what is at stake. You know, we have to see. You cannot, I cannot say this and that if sure, I, sure, I do sure. not see what's happening. Understood. Understood. Yes. Thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. Adolfo, how are we doing? Hope you're doing okay. And um, what else would you like to see in Laredo? What what would you see Laredo in five, ten years? ¿Qué quieres ver aquí en Laredo? Laredo. Well, like I said, este, more places for people to go, young people and people to go, out, go, you know, like, how would you say, for entertainment, you know, like a parks and make a, a river, like in San Antonio, create something that use the river, the water, and, uh, and create, este, Use people that need jobs, create jobs by making them beautify the land and the country, our, you know, our area, sure. inside the Laredo area. It's <clears throat> like the, the other day there was a big fire in the, uh, near the lake. It burned them over 100 acres, I say. And they were persecuting the, the landowners near. The city was telling them don't have, but the fire was in the, the cities, the city's property, but they never took care of it. They let brush grow, they knew it, a creek grows through there. And, and now they're holding all the citizens responsible for, for that fire. And the fire was was because of the city not taking care of their land. So. So, okay. Well, I know you have a 90 days before election. Right, yeah. And we wish you the best. 
Okay, thank you. And thank you for standing up. And thank you for standing up for the for the Constitution, which very few do. Right. And um, we wish you the best in Laredo. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. good luck on that. And you okay, guys out there, thank you guys for asking the questions. Gabriel, Louis, Adolfo, Rudy. So, um, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank and you for Thank you for, thank you for coming up here. Right. And, uh, and uh, that's, those are very good points that you said. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Until next time, guys, this weekend, you guys be safe. Um, hug your little ones. Hug those that you love. And uh, keep moving forward. I know school's going to start for some uh, school districts next week. So in the early morning, be careful for those kids out there walking out. Until next time, peace.